All right, all right, all right, all right. So this is it. Today's warm up. Study Monday. I'm going to f mainly focus on the head and the and the front. I think I'm not not even going to touch the background uh, or the arm. I suspect I want to focus on the head and the front, like that that flow, the, the those shapes, <clears throat> and I think. I want to be, I want to try to be mindful of, uh, I think what I want to focus on is to be mindful of the direction of the form and the marks I make. So I don't, um, as an example, I don't paint the highlights kind of how how to say it, like artificially on the form that is a, it's just an object that I'm painting but it's the result of the form if that makes sense I'm going to try to to do it that way rather than but I know it's going to be that I need to paint the highlight that I will never be able to not do that but I will try to be mindful of what I'm seeing and how I'm painting it, like how the form is turning, how the form is, I think that will be the study. Um, how I will make the marks in the shape. Hey Zelin. yeah, armor. Like I said, uh, the, the study will be on, on mark making and form and being mindful of how I how I depict um, the shapes, right? So I, I will try, I think firstly, make uh, marks with the brush of general uh, place shapes and like trying to follow the shape so I understand like the weight of the shapes. And then when I paint it, I will try to be mindful of the form. I will see. Uh, that's the idea of the study, at least. Um, because it's not a complicated form, but it's a um, complicated relationship between everything. Uh, which I think could be a good thing to study. Especially being mindful of the form, you know, not just painting it like, like an abstract thing, but much like Glenn Wilpo. Uh, talks about the anatomy is that there is a backside to the form like you, you need to construct the f marks as if there is you're doing it behind or, or, or around the perspective you know, or like a, in depth at least anyways that, that's what I'm going to try to try to focus on I think I think it'll be a good draw the unseen ear yeah, exactly. Maybe with this brush. All right. Okay, let's try. Um, hey, Tukan, Tukan Oblu, Tukan Oblu, or Tukan Oblu. So many different versions. How's it going? Yeah. So today, I I think I'll I'll be doing. Uh, brush stroke study and being mindful a little bit more I feel like a lot of times uh, Tukan is nice, fine all right um, I find that due to my speed of painting a lot of times, like I, I get this stuff done, right? But 
I think there is something to be gained by by taking my time. I think it's time for me to much like a meditation practice mindfulness not so much of uh, spirit but about uh, taking time because I, I, I feel like I rush a lot and that's also a big problem when I try to be um, exact in terms of um, likeness I mean obviously I'm self-taught uh, over the years you know I haven't gone to art school I haven't been taught the techniques of of everything so a lot of it is self learned behavior good and bad and I think that's one thing that I love about um, art also is that it's the fact that if you want to you can never stop learning you know Even being a veteran in the industry, I would say 14, 15 years warrants the veteran status, right? But not like the Sid Meads or the Craig Mullins, but I'm getting there. But I love, still love trying trying to hack you know how, how everything works figure it out and I think that's one part of also where where I, th I find self education gives you more of an open door anyway weeping Jay Frenchy French how's it going and I think coming from uh, the time of digital art where there were no like gum roads etc you had to figure this stuff out yourself everyone experimenting with with art and techniques and approaches and nothing was set in stone yet i find that coming from that time in the industry also makes you probably a little bit more uh, uh, what's it called open for change I think the more things are let's see here how should I Okay, I will, I will. I will try it this way. I think the more you're set, like the more you are, the industry is set in their way. The more, or like the less ability to do something different. It is. It has to be that way because if we, if if there is a standard, you 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 learn that the standard should be followed in order to to get where you want to go, right? But being being a part of the industry where everyone was experimenting and everyone was defining the standard and everyone was. Um, making the industry you know back in 2000 to i would say 2000 to, to 2010 
10. Yeah, around, I mean, 2006. Around 2006, people were still not really sure what concept art is or was or or the the power of it i think a lot of places and a lot of people still were kind of figuring out like oh, how this concept art thingy what can we do with it and um, and people started setting standards in terms of uh, complexity of uh, in terms of uh, like orthographics and all these things and how you iterate designs and what's the best outcome for that rather than I think before that point where there was nothing defined I think a big part of it was a great designer or a great artist you give them time and they will with their knowledge create something beautiful but a lot of it I think also was there's not a lot of um, leeway there like there there isn't like it was is today where you do like 50 versions or or things like that that was in the beginning it was undefined you know and I still remember working for Sega in 2006 uh, me being the only concept artist and they were like, okay, how do we use you? And <laughs> in the end, they used me for everything. Like, <laughs> you know, there was really no, no artist that was that, uh, uh, have had that ability to uh, iterate designs, uh, having the, having one of their strengths. I mean, now I'm talking about myself in third person, which is a bit weird. But uh, having the strength, this artist having the strength of um, showing more than one idea uh, in a relative fast pace. And up to that point, they had only 3D artists. And some of the 3D artists were good at drawing. And they could kind of do the, do the job, right? But that's not that long ago. That's 12 years ago. 12 years ago, 30, 13 years ago, you know, I mean, granted, um, 13 years is also a very long time, but my point being, like nowadays, a, a guy or a girl wanting to uh, be a concept artist there is a lot of tutorials out there of how to learn it but a lot of them are very uh, very much the same and i think those a lot of people nowadays they they don't experiment as much as as we did <laughs> back in the day sounds like i'm an old fart but maybe i am an old fart because many years ago, people were sharing techniques and, and discussing things openly on forums. And what was great about forums, for example, is that the information is there, right? It's, in a, in a, in, in, it's constructed in a manner where you can dip your toes in the discussion at any point because the text is chronologically saved in that sense like it's, it's great for overview and all these things and, and modern day communications in terms of like social media and things like that it's, it's really hard to have it um, journaled in that way hey voodoo breakfast uh, lurib sir dan fight milk bruno romanos Fernandez, Jonathan, how's it going? Hey, Kirill, how's it going? Cosmoverse, what up? Cheers.
<laughs> I got a haircut. <laughs> no, oh, you mean the study? Oh, shit. <laughs> Fernandez, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. That's that's my point, right? It's like a lot of people don't still don't really know what uh, concept art is, or uh, it's because it's not because of the studios. It's because of um, oh well, yeah. It's a tricky, it's a tricky um, topic of like chicken or the egg type deal, you know. But for me, hey, I am weekly. What's it going? What up? The creator sounds like I'm. The terminator of concept art. Uh, no, yeah, but for me, the <laughs> for me the concept art is visual troubleshooting. You you solve design ideas. Uh, you visualize them. You you uh, solve it in a way where other people can. Uh, understand it the idea and the design right so basically they they don't know what something should look like you design it you explain it in a constructive way where people can see it and understand there shouldn't be any questions um, surrounding uh, how it works after the concept art is done right Whatever the task, whatever the need is, the concept artist should be able to supply it. Same goes for concept designer. It's the same thing. Um, you know, but with more focus on design. Um, but it's the same, same, same. Just that a concept artist might not um, I mean with more less focus on the actual like designing every little intricate part in terms of doing it overkill it's just you know it's the same category Hey, Kirill, it is. If you write apostrophe winner, you will see who won. Zialin. <laughs> Shaza, how's it going? Nereida, what up? Miguel, oh yeah. Miguel here, he, he snagged number three. GG. Good job. Yeah, so for that studio, for example, where they wanted you as a matte painter, um, they probably don't have a concept artist. And they don't know the role of a concept artist. Um, I mean, you could inform them that you, you, you don't do matte painting as a concept artist. And if they want a, a matte painter, they would have to hire a matte painter. You know, in that sense. Um, that would kind of kindly point out to them that you you don't you are not the matte painter, but they might come back with oh well we need you to do a little bit of everything, and then it's obvious that you're not going to be a concept artist, you're going to be an artist for their project, and that meaning you'll be doing everything that's creative <laughs> and I've been in that position as well where they they just need a skilled artists eye on whatever they need solved and that's cool to, to be one of those as well but 
then you'll have to realize that you're not going to be a pure concept artist where you are de uh, designing and visually troubleshooting uh, what an idea is and making it concrete right solving the the problem visually you might be having to do matte painting uh, icons cutscene graphics uh, color grading the game <laughs> you know you might be doing all other things that an, an, an art oh, an art one or no wow english come on an artistic eye requires that didn't want to come out right at all sounded like i was having a stroke dot 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 oh you're in a bad state Shasta? oh no there's a swedish saying everything will will uh, resolve but in swedish it's like solve everything will solve itself said the guy taking a dump in the bathtub you know it's like it's a problem but it'll solve itself in the end meaning it, you know it's a little bit fun saying like don't worry <laughs> okay so I think it goes down like that like the major form right but it bends yeah and then it has like a highlight yeah like I said at the beginning of the stream the intent of today is to be mindful and observe a lot and be mindful of the marks I'm making. So I'm, I'm taking the, um, I'm make, making sure, like I, I'm, I'm doing the correct moves more so than trying to get stuff done you know so I'm deliberately taking my time and trying to construct it in a way where it looks good you know And I deliberately selecting areas of the uh, of the um, uh, reference to study. So I want to try to not be if if like the study is not being efficient per se about the brush marks. But it is a result of it. Like I don't want to be as fast as I usually do things because I feel like maybe sometimes it's unnecessary in the sense of um, control. Even though I have control when I paint fast, the mind is looking at things at a different pace. Though, if you if you take your time, and I I've noticed. The difference in a lot of artists, uh, other than me, they, they, they are way more considerate in their marks. And I wanted to try that because I am up for, for learning new things, right? And I see a lot of people like, no, that's not right. No, that's not right. Yeah, that's, that's the one. You know? And I, I generally don't do that, but I want to practice it. Because I think it's, it is a skill set that's not uh, necessarily natural to me. 
but I want it. I want to learn it. So that was the idea behind it because I I, I noticed a lot of artists uh, they 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 like they're so mindful of how they lay the marks and I think I need to practice that. I think I will gain things from it. So that's the that was the stud that's the purpose of the study that I set out to do. I called it out before ahead of time that I will be mindful and construct the form mindfully <laughs> if that's a word. Try trying to capture the the form uh, slowly. And, and and much like Glenn Wilpel says when he draws anatomy to draw through the form like that that there is like a backside of the shoulder but the, you don't draw it but you can't just float it right you have to imagine it being a 3d object so that's what I'm 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 mind being mindful of the the depth the the 3D form of it. And that's why I'm doing it a little bit slower so I can like look at the depth where like, the angle is. So I just don't look at the dark value. Like, oh, here it needs to be darker. I'm looking at it going, why is it darker? How is the form turning so that the, the light is darker, you know? There is a difference. There's a fundamental difference there in 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 thought. Instead of being uh, an observing machine that will observe the value, or you can observe the result of the form, right. and the value will just second hand in second hand. Or the like, what's light and what's shadow will be automatic, rather than you looking at it at, as a like a point sample, like darker, darker, darker. Is not considering the global light, you know. Zielin, yeah, exactly. In in school, normal school, um, as in I didn't go to art school, um, and um, anatomy, like uh, life drawing classes. There's sometimes a instructor walking around, and they would always say um, to me, like, observe two thirds, draw one third. Ob observe two thirds, draw one third. So you don't just draw because if you observe you will you will automatically try to make sense of what you're seeing right and um, that's what they said like you gotta slow down observe and then make a mark slow down observe and then make a mark I, I can see the point with that and also the it's very tricky to do because you want to get it down, right? So it's like take time to be efficient so you, you, you make the right move rather than like head down and run. <laughs> I guess it's an analogy there. So I would love to see your take on 
on being a little bit more mindful and observe the study. I think that would be a good exercise in general for anyone really. Uh, Sir Dan, it depends on what you want to study. Sometimes you need to do a 10-hour study if you want to learn something specifically. But the idea is always set a goal before you do the study of what you want to study. What's the purpose of the study? And just don't copy. I mean, you can do a 10-second sketch, and that could be a study because you observed something, you try to figure out why is it the way it is, and then you're drawing and like trying to understand it. That's like that's purposefully studying. Don't copy pixel by pixel or object to object. I mean that's also studying. You can also study that. Like I need to be better at observational drawing. So I will observe and try to copy it as exactly as I can. That's a great study to do. But it's not the only study you should do, right? A voodoo breakfast, yeah, exactly. Uh, Luchi jelly slug. I, I like it. I do it all the time. Hey, Fidi Ferro, how's it going? What up? Uh, what I used to do when I was in, in the uni, uh, I went and bought a printer paper stack. I, I went around the campus and asked people to just make a line on, a piece of pa on the piece of paper. And they made a mark and I would uh, take a next page and I would go to the next person. And I would ask, would you just mind making a random line? It's like, don't worry, it's a, it's, it's like, a, it's, it's gonna be, I'm gonna have a game, right? Uh, but I need random, random information in order to play the game. So they were like, all right, and they just made random pencil marks on the paper. And then in the end, I had like 500 pages of random people's random marks, and I would sit and look at each page and go what can this be what can that be this looks like it could be a rhino and I would draw I would maintain the lines and try to draw a rhino out of what I saw clearly I was the oddball at campus <laughs> that's not a, a normal person thing to do but I didn't give two cents about people's thoughts about me I have no friends so it's okay <laughs> all by myself and I would buy that beautiful like raining window like they had in um, friends you know the TV show when Joe is sitting and watch looking out of the window with it's just a window with raindrops that's my everyday life. Toucan. That's cool. I like that game. Time is up. Oh, <laughs> no friends. That's okay. That's why I made children. So now I finally have friends. They have no choice. They have to be my friends because I'm their dad. <laughs> Joking, obviously. They're they still not my friend. <laughs> All right. Let's... Um, I think the study was pretty cool. I like the like the end result. Um, I definitely, p I would say I picked something up from being mindful. Um, I will do more mindful studies 
Um, I think having armor metal shapes is an easy way, clear way to see where you're making your marks wrong because metal is very directional. Like because of the way it's constructed, it's more or less a shitty mirror and mirror bending uh, will make everything longer. So that's why we have very long highlights on metal and you can see it on the dome of the helmet that it's rounded which then all the reflection are starting to be more spherized and we can clearly see the direction in metal much better and I think that's why it's a great thing to study uh, marks because it's very directional like I said. Um, so I would recommend you try and uh, try and being mindful in your marks and in doing this study and see where you get and, and look at directions of the metal, the form of the metal and how it how it relates to each other. Um, anyways, let's um, let's find some kind soul to raid. Get, pass on the love. Let's let's raid Max. We haven't raided Max in ages, and he's drawing some Zelda fan art, so that's great. And he looks like he just woke up. As per usual, uh, I'm gonna do the outro, and after the outro, take you to the raid. So don't go anywhere. Just join in the raid. Uh, have a fantastic day. Good night if you're that part of the world. See you tomorrow morning for your topics and I will draw whatever you want me to draw. Have a good one, everyone. Thanks for coming. Much appreciated.